A very warm welcome to you all to this service of worship from the parish of Wareham. We're very glad that you've been able to join with us today and we pray that all who watch this service will be drawn closer to the love of God our Father. Just in case you don't know me, my name is Helen Williams and I'm one of the assistant curates here in the parish of Wareham and I'm leading this service from the Church of St John the Evangelist in East Holm. The details of how to contact us will be on the screen at the end of this service and please do get in touch if you would like to speak to one of the ministry team. I invite you to join in singing our first hymn, O oh God, our help in ages past. and I need God's help in everything we do, so let us ask him to help us to live lives that please him. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St John reminds us that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So let us pray. 
Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are truly sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's say together the collect, the special prayer for this Sunday. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride, and when we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as God's forgiven people, let us sing, My hope is built on nothing less. Today are read to us by Margaret Harris and Mike Quinlan, after which we will hear our sermon, which today is brought to us by our team rector, Canon Simon Everett. A reading from Genesis chapter 15, the Lord's covenant with Abraham. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me, since I remain childless 
and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 12, beginning at verse 32. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will make them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. At the moment, my daughter and son-in-law are in the throes of buying their first house together. And I have to say, it's been a pretty tortuous process. They first put in an offer back in January, and uh, now, eight months later, they're still waiting for completion. Uh, I won't bore you with all of the uh, details, but the delays have been due to many different things, many of them beyond uh, their control. But after much prayer and deliberation, they remain convinced that this is the property for them. This is what God wants of them, and so they are persisting. Well, I'm sure we've all had episodes in life uh, when we are convinced that some, something is right and in accordance with God's will. But for some reason or another, everything seems to conspire against us. All, and so all sorts of things then start going through our heads. Are we wrong? Is it just our desire rather than what God wants for us? Are we right in principle but wrong in the particulars? In my daughter's case, is it right that they buy a house but not this particular one? Are we right but is it the wrong time? And so it goes on, is God testing us? If so, how long will this go on and why would he do that? The longer the delay often, the greater the questioning. These times really can be times of testing and they do help us to see how deep and strong our faith really is. Well, we're in the, when we're in the midst of such times, it's good to remember Abraham the founding father of the three world's monotheistic religions. His story starts in Genesis 12, with him being called by God to leave the town of Haran, where he and his family had settled. 
So he sets off with his wife, Sarai, and with his nephew, Lot. And eventually they come uh, into Canaan, where they settle, albeit in a nomadic kind of way, feeding their ship and sheep and finding water wherever they can. And this would then become the promised land where Moses would lead God's people. But for Abraham, there were plenty of challenges, even though he was where God wanted him to be. There were droughts, there were threats, there were disagreements, there were fights, fights with neighbouring tribes. However, despite all of these trials, Abraham became very wealthy in livestock and in silver and in gold. But there was one big problem. He had no one to hand it on to. He and Sarah had no children, which in those times was viewed as an unmitigated disaster. Without children, there was no one to carry on your family line, no one to look after you in old age, no one to carry out your funerary rites. But there was even more to it than that. Children, particularly male children in that culture, brought prestige and standing within the communities around. The absence of children, on the other hand, was considered more than misfortune. It was regarded as a curse, a sign of disfavour with the gods, or, as in later Israel, by the one true God, Yahweh. Personal grief and social stigma, male chi made childlessness, a terrible thing. And it continues to be a hard thing to this day in a very different society. Infertile couples today speak of, feeling of sh the feelings of shock, denial, grief and anger, which they have to work through. Beth Spring, in her book, Childlessness, says this. For many infertile couples, the question comes in the context of their religious beliefs. Is God angry with us? Is he punishing us for not letting us by, by not letting us have children? Infertility generates feelings of guilt and worthlessness. You might find yourself bargaining with God, promising anything in exchange for a child. This goes back at least as far as biblical times. Hannah, longing for a child, prayed, O oh Lord Almighty, if you will look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, and while I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And eventually she was blessed with Samuel. But one in seven couples in Britain today struggle to have children. It is a very real issue for a great many couples. So please do remember them in your prayers as they struggle. In today's passage, we can feel Abraham's pain and confusion. After all, his call had been so specific. Back in Genesis 12, the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people and your father's household to a land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out for Haran. So even at the outset, Abraham was no spring chicken. But as time continued to pass, nothing happened, and time was running out. And not unnaturally, Abram began to question what his calling might mean. Did it mean adoption? Did it mean uh, a surrogacy or having a baby by one of his servants? God responds to this by telling him this was not the answer. He and Sarah would have a child of their own. But they would have to wait and trust in the Lord. Which is always far easier said than done especially when the clock is ticking. But we are told God took Abraham outside and said, look up to the sky, count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, 
so shall your offspring be. Abraham had to learn to wait in God's time, not his own. It's a very tough lesson, but it's a lesson we all have to learn. Waiting in God's time means believing God wants the best for us. Once we believe that, then we're on the path to finding peace of heart and having an openness to receive whatever it is God wants of us. We are then told that Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. The Hebrew word verb to believe is from the same root as the word amen. It conveys a security of a faithful and established relationship. Abram was convinced in the depth of his being that the Lord was true to the covenant he had made. And even though everything pointed to the contrary, Abraham believed God would work the impossible in Sarai, who was well past childbearing age, and he so old that he was as good as dead, so the Bible tells us. Well, one commentator has this to say. The incident highlights for us one of the main truths of the gospel, for faith is central to its message. Abram received a specific promise from God, but he did not seem to receive what was promised, and he could do nothing to achieve it. He was helpless, so much so that the promise appeared to mock him. Yet his response was to look to the greatness of the one who had spoken and to accept that he took responsibility for the fulfilment of his promise. Faith rests on the fact that God is faithful. And when we take God at his word, we prove for ourselves his faithfulness. And after further years of waiting, Abraham received the promise but through faith he found immediate acceptance with God, who reckoned it to him as righteousness. The life of faith is never without its trials and tribulations. But be assured, God is faithful and will watch over you. Just look at the way he watched over Abraham and Sarai. Ultimately, God showed his love for humankind by giving his son so that whoever believes and trusts in him will have and know the fullness of eternal life. And for that, thanks be to God. Amen. We sing again, Thy Kingdom Come.
Let us pray. God of creation, who loves all he has made and all that has evolved, open the eyes of your people that your love might be reflected in our care for the planet. We give thanks for our churches and for those you have chosen, men and women, to serve in your ministry, the ministry of your church. Pour your blessings on them as they lead our worship. We ask you to open wide our hearts that we may welcome the stranger and share our faith with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you the people of the world who are persecuted because of their faith. May they be freed from fear and anxiety and strengthened in the courageous witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in authority, especially at this time, bringing before you our own government and those tasked with the decision of electing our new Prime Minister. We pray that you give strength to all people of the world and their leaders, that they will work together for justice and for peace. And we pray, God of justice and mercy, we pray for the people of Ukraine, Afghanistan and Syria. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for those with power over war or peace for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. And above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give you thanks, Lord, for the waters of the earth, for life-sustaining rain, lakes and deep oceans, Keep us mindful of how precious these are and how vulnerable they are. Help us to work together for clean water and for the sharing of it with those who have need of it today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we beseech you graciously to visit your servants for whom our prayers are desired. We commend to your mercy the elderly, the lonely, and the infirm, and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We ask for your comfort for all those who suffer. Give skill and compassion to all who do the work of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who, drawing their strength from you in this world, have yielded their souls into your care. We remember the lives of all those who have died. Receive them in mercy as they come to your presence. We ask for your hand of comfort on all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you draw us by your beauty and transform us by your holiness. Let our worship echo all creation's praise and declare your glory to the nations. Let us join together in the prayer our Father has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Our final hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. so much for being part of our service. We hope that you have enjoyed it and are encouraged in your walk with God as you move into the week ahead. And now I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing for all who have been part of this service wherever and whenever you have joined with us. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. 
Amen.